For every arm stroke, there are three kicks. The four beat kick, in between the two and six beat kick, where one big and one small kick are made to each arm stroke. The fifth element is body rotation. When Ian swims during training or competition, his body naturally rotates or rolls from side to side on its long axis. Ian's body rotation is caused by the rotating action of his arms and is a natural movement. This rotation assists his body to engage the large trunk muscles, making the stroke more efficient. It also helps his arms to recover, allowing his hips and the legs to move naturally with the movement of his body and his head to turn to breathe. If Ian didn't allow his body to rotate, it would sway from side to side, greatly reducing the efficiency of his stroke and his overall performance in the water. The start for the freestyle event is one of the most important stages of competitive swimming, as it can often determine the outcome of the race. While there are many variations of the start, Ian has found the running start technique to be the most efficient and effective. The running start takes its name from the track sprinter's start, where Ian places one foot at the front of the blocks and the other toward the rear. Note Ian's overall feet, body, head and arm positioning when he takes up the running start position. An alternative starting technique is the conventional start, where the two feet are placed slightly apart on the front edge of the block. The toes of both feet are wrapped over the front edge. Again, note Ian's overall position as he uses the conventional starting technique. Ian is using his preferred running start technique where you can now see the many aspects of his start in three dimensions. Note Ian's arms, head, chest, body and feet positioning as he leaves the starting blocks. You can see Ian piercing the water through the smallest possible entry point. Note Ian's arm, head, body and feet positioning as he begins to enter the water. Once Ian enters the water, he maintains a streamlined position, making sure that he doesn't take his first arm stroke until he reaches the surface. The turn used during the freestyle stroke is just as critical as all other elements of the stroke. Many races have been lost and won on the efficiency and effectiveness of the swimmer's turn. Ian demonstrates some very important and effective turn elements that make him one of the world's greatest swimmers. These elements are knowing how many strokes he requires from the end of the black line T-bar before he has to begin his turn. He dolphin kicks on the third last stroke to help lift his hips to turn as he nears the end of the pool. He uses his arm to pull down across the body, tucking his chin to the chest to initiate the roll of the turn. His legs then bend up to his chest, allowing him to complete the roll. After completing the roll, he then places both feet on the wall and literally bounces off the surface. His body rotating during the push-off phase, assisted by his arm, 
closest to the pool floor. Finally, he begins to dolphin kick away from the wall. While remaining in a streamlined position, his chin still on the chest, one hand on top of the other, his arms behind his ears, and his body and legs at full stretch. Swimming is a very social sport that I've always enjoyed and one that has always kept me fit and healthy since I was a child. Over the years, I have come to enjoy it even more as it has taught me a great deal about myself and life. I believe that by teaching and encouraging young children to swim from an early age, they too can enjoy the many benefits of swimming that I have discovered throughout my career. Many memories come back of my early years in swimming when I'm in the pool with children. I really enjoy this opportunity when I can swim with children who are either learning to swim or practicing to improve their swimming technique. When children are learning and practicing swimming, it is important that they use the correct equipment, such as goggles, swimwear and kickboards, all suitable for their size. It is equally important for children to learn and practice the basic skills of swimming. They form the foundation on which their swimming ability will continue to improve. My coach always reminds me of the basics when I'm training in the pool and I'm always doing activities in the water that allow me to practice them correctly. I believe that my ability to swim as efficiently as I do comes from the many years of practicing the basic skills. In order for children to learn swimming skills, they need to participate in a variety of very simple structured activities that progress in easy stages. The activities need to isolate and focus on the different elements of freestyle and demonstrations of the activities should be used whenever possible. It is important to note that swim centres offer many child swim programs that provide a wide variety of activities that cater for all different swimming abilities, from learn to swim through to swim squad training. Focusing now on some activities, here you can see one type of activity that encourages children to work their legs and develop their kicking ability, a very important part of swimming. The other key elements of the swimming technique are body position, arm stroke and breathing which you can observe the children attempting to practice in this activity. Treading water is a simple activity to develop water fitness and endurance. It also encourages water confidence. There are many activities that provide practice for the arm stroke. Here you can see the children again performing one of those activities. Correct stroke style, arm and shoulder strength are both things that need to be developed to become an efficient swimmer. Again, it is important to demonstrate to the children what they are required to do in the water, as it makes their understanding a great deal clearer. The activity should always be fun and not too difficult for the children. I know that I always learn and train best when I'm enjoying myself in the pool. For those children who are more advanced in their swimming ability, the tumble turn can be taught and practiced. It is quite a difficult skill to master and requires a lot of practice to perform it correctly. But it is very rewarding when you get it right. And finally, there is the dive start. Here you can see the children practicing their dives. The skill of diving also takes a lot of practice to be able to do it well. But the sooner you start learning how to perform the dive, the sooner you begin to master it. While some activities have been presented, they only represent a small number of activities that many swim instructors and coaches can use to improve your own swimming ability. There only are really the tip of the iceberg. Like these boys and girls you've been watching, my swimming career also began when I was quite young. I was only eight years old when I first participated in swimming squad training. Mind you, it was only one half an hour session per week. I'm sure through the opportunity given to me to learn to swim and the variety of activities that were presented to develop my swimming skills, if I hadn't have done them and didn't use them, I wouldn't be able to enjoy my swimming at all. And it is my enjoyment that has allowed me to benefit from swimming for life. Please remember that when participating in either recreational or competitive swimming, there should always be someone present who holds both resuscitation and first aid accreditations. When participating in squad training, the instructor should also possess appropriate coaching qualifications.